One in 16 men over 65 suffers from osteoporosis, yet few are tested or diagnosed. Now, new guidelines from the American College of Physicians call for physicians to screen for osteoporosis in older men, especially those over the age of 65. Dr. Amir Kasim is an author of the guidelines. Osteoporosis is a major public health issue in men and is significantly underreported, underdiagnosed, and undertreated. Osteoporosis is a disease in which bones become fragile and are more likely to break. These breaks or fractures typically occur in the hip, spine, and wrist. With the aging of the population, hip fractures are projected to double by 2040. Once diagnosed, a variety of treatments are available to reduce the risk of fracture. We recommend that physicians should periodically assess the risk factors for osteoporosis in men. Risk factors for osteoporosis include older age, which is generally over the age of 65, low body weight, weight loss, fractures in the absence of substantial trauma, and lack of physical activity. Patients at risk are given a DEXA bone density scan, a non-invasive procedure for determining bone loss. Low-dose x-rays of two different energies are used to distinguish between bone and soft tissue, giving a very accurate measurement of bone density at these sites. 87-year-old William Murphy learned he had osteoporosis during a screening 10 years ago. I'm glad I found out about it when I did because it probably prevented me from breaking bones. Osteoporosis rates among men are expected to increase 50% over the next 15 years. Dr. Charles Cutler, an internal medicine physician, appreciates being reminded that older men need to be assessed for osteoporosis. The guidelines are very useful. At this time, I can now show my patients something very concrete that uh, tells them that yes, in fact, as they get older, the risk of osteoporosis is increasing. And in fact, I now know that by the time a man is 65, there's somewhere between a five and 7% chance that he is suffering from osteoporosis. The new guidelines are published in Annals of Internal Medicine. On behalf of the American College of Physicians, this is Jim Lawrence.